Hey guys, welcome back to Sports Design School. Now I noticed a lot of people were really interested in our first Design Like Ohio State video. So today I'm gonna to be walking through a second Ohio State graphic and showing you how to recreate this graphic in Photoshop step by step. Let's get started. Now before we dive in, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss out on any future Sports Design School videos. We have lots of cool stuff coming out very soon, so make sure you don't miss out on that. So today we're going to be recreating this graphic right here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Ohio State. Ohio State is one of the best, if not the best, collegiate graphic departments in the game. Seriously, all the stuff they put out is so good. And so today we're going to be recreating this. I'm going to show you how to do literally everything in this design. So to start off, I'm going to go over and create a new document. I already have one created. For the sake of simplicity, I just made my document eight and a half by 11. I'm also going to go over and drag this image into my new document and then scale that up just so we have some reference on what we're working with. And again, it's not the perfect size, but it's close enough. Um, I think that looks good. So if you'll notice, this design really has three main elements. So you have the cutout, of course, we have the text, and then we have the geometric shapes in the background. So I'm gonna walk you through each part of those. We're gonna start off with the text, since that's easiest, but also kind of the most interesting in this particular design. So. I'm going to start off by just typing T to open up my text tool and I'm just going to type own the, just like Ohio State did. Now if you're wondering what font I'm using, I'm using this font called Anton. Now I, I've talked a little bit in the past about what font Ohio State usually uses. It's called Vanguard. I'll link it down in the description if you want to check it out. It's like $40 to buy. Um, but I found this Anton font looks pretty similar to what they use in this particular graphic. So I'm going to use that. I'll also link the Anton font down in the description if you want to check that out and use it for your own video. For the color, I'm just going to go over and then use my eye picker tool and select that shade of gray to make sure we're as close to what they're doing as possible. And I'm just going to drag it in the rough position of their design. And that's actually looking pretty similar to what they did in their design. So you can see we have our own the. And next here in the bottom there's field and it's altered to where it looks like it's laying flat on the ground. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this but I'll show you the easiest way. So I'm just going to go out and type in field again with the same font. And I'm going to scale it up to roughly the same size on the top because that's all that kind of really matters here. And that's looking pretty good. All right, and now what we're gonna do is go to our layer and then right click on the layer. For those on Mac, it's control clicking. And I'm gonna hit convert to smart object. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to edit this object like it's a shape. Um, and it allows us to go through and warp it and distort it without altering the text at all. So it's really helpful in that area. Now I'm gonna go up to Edit, Transform, and then go over to Perspective. And now so we have this transform box that has popped up. And all I'm going to do is take one of the corners and drag it to the right. And you can see we start to get some of that distorted flat on the ground effect. Now I'm gonna go like this and we're just gonna check back and see how far they did. So it looks like theirs was a little bit more, so I'm just gonna go back and hit Edit, Transform, Perspective. And that is looking pretty close to their design. I might move it up just a little bit. But there you go, that's our laying flat on the ground text effect. Super easy. So that's looking pretty good so far. The next item on this design really just is the cutout. 
So you can use whatever cutout you have. I just have this cutout for now because I already have it done. And I'm just going to drag this into and scale down this particular cutout. Perfect. And now I want to make sure the sizing of the player is roughly the same. And that's looking pretty good. I might make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's looking good. Now just like on some of my other graphics, I want to make sure this image is looking good so we can go in and edit the cutout individually to make sure it is nice and clear and has a nice texture to it. So I'm going to go over, click on my layer, and I'm going to go up to Filter, and then down to Camera Raw Filter. And that's going to bring up this dialog box right here. Now this kind of looks super complicated, but don't worry. So we're going to scroll down and go up to Basic. And when you have basic, it gives you just basic editing techniques and things like that. So for instance, my image right here is looking pretty dark. So I'm going to take the blacks in my image and just move them up a little bit. And you can see all of the dark parts of my image, when you turn it all the way down, they get dark. And when you turn them up a little bit, it lifts those black spots in your image, which is super helpful. The other thing I'm going to do is increase my clarity, just to give it a little bit more sharpness. And then I might just add a little bit of dehaze as well. And that looks good. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see we have our player done. Now the next thing you have to take into account is they have a shadow right here on the feet of their player. Now there are so many different ways to do shadows. I think it's interesting. You see all of the time people will just take this like cutout they have and then do like a black color overlay and then flip it and then call it a day and be like, oh, that's the shadow. Um, but and oftentimes it ends up not looking that great. So what I usually do for shadows, I'm going to go up and create a new layer and I'm just going to drag that layer behind. I already created a new layer. And I'm just going to drag that layer behind my cutout. And I'm going to hit B for my brush tool. Now don't worry, you don't have to have any special brushes installed or anything like that. We're doing this all natively within Photoshop. So I'm just going to select my soft round brush. And for sizing for this particular document, I'm just going to say 180. Perfect. Now I'm going to go up to Window and Brush Settings. And that gives us this dialog box where we're able to alter the way our brush looks. So shadows tend to be kind of low and flat in this particular orientation of image. So what I'm going to do is just grab this and squeeze up. And we can hover over here and you can see what that does to our shadow or to our brush for our shadow. I might make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. The other thing I'm going to do is make sure my flow is down to about 50%. And what flow does is it allows us to paint over similar areas without it building up really quickly. So it allows us to have more control over some of the intensity of our shadows in particular spots. So I'm going to start off by just going right here. Oh. And just doing a really subtle shadow. Again, I find that it's better to have a subtle shadow that looks really great than a super obnoxious shadow because your shadow, if it gets to the point where it's too noticeable, just takes away from your design. And then same thing right here. Again, nothing super complicated, just dragging it over a little bit. And that looks pretty good to me. I might turn the fill down just a little bit. But all in all, it's still, what this does is it makes our image look more in line, like, it, like the guy is actually standing on top of this text right here versus just that. So that was, that's looking pretty good to me. Now to go back to our original image, they have this red square in the bottom. Nothing too difficult with that. We're just going to take this and drag over that rough area. And then I'm just going to select a shade of red. And then I'm going to drag this over 
all of our text and everything else. Perfect. Now the other thing you'll notice are these squares in the background of the cutout. And that's easy to do too. So we're just going to go here, go back to our rectangle tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for a little bit more accuracy. I'm going to hide him for now. And we are just going to click and drag like that. And that was a dark gray color, so I'm just going to go and use the same color we're using for our text, just for consistency. I'm going to make another one. That looks about right. And it looks like that is that color. So I'm just going to use that. And then one more shape. Something just like that. Perfect. I'm going to bring him back. Now the other thing that we need to add in that they have in their design are these lines right here. And that's again super easy to do. I'll just go through and rectangle tool. And I'm just going to do these pretty quickly. So they might not be perfect but you get the idea. So that's that side. And then we have this side right here. And that is good. Perfect. Now I'm going to, oh, I'm going to hide this for now. Now let's say you made your lines and you're really worried about those lines being perfect and on a straight line and you don't know how to level those. Well, there's a super way or a super easy way that you can do that. So if you hit Command R on your keyboard, it brings up these rulers on the top and side. And all you have to do is click on it and then drag down and that gives you a ruler to kind of see where all of your lines are so for instance it's looking like these are all I can move my line so I say oh well let's put it to there and then we can edit these accordingly to bring them up to the line and an easy way to do this in Photoshop is actually really cool so if you're on a Mac all you do is hover over the object you want with your move tool selected and hit command and then click and that will select that layer and all you do is just arrow tool up and same thing with that now I'm not going to do that for all of these just for the sake of time and then let's say you're done with your ruler all you do is click on it and then drag it back up to the top and it's gone you don't have to worry about it anymore okay a couple more things so they have the Nike logo over their image. So I'm just going to type in vintage Nike logo. And let's see. Looking for a PNG version. Perfect. That's what we're going for. And I'm just going to click and drag into my Photoshop document. It's literally so easy just to click and drag. It makes it so much better than saving the item and then all of that great stuff. And now I'm just going to hit Command T and scale that down to about the size we want to fit into that square right there. I'm just going to put it in the square, maybe a little bit smaller. If you want to get more precise scaling, you can go up here to the top bar and just click and drag the W to the left to adjust the width and the height. That looks good. I'm going to double click the layer and hit color overlay and then just change that to white. Nice. So you can see we're getting pretty close to Ohio State's design. Now they have the Ohio State logo. Now if you're looking for logos in any design and you need to find like high quality logos, just go to sportslogos.net. It's one of the best websites, I think, in terms of design resources, you can go to college and then search by college. They have literally every single logo you could be looking for. So instead of going through Google and just Googling like Los Angeles Dodgers logo, you can just come here and they have all of the um, logos for you. So we're going to go to N through R to look for Ohio State. And you can see no matter how big or small the college is, it pretty much has most of them in here. 
We're going to choose Ohio State. And we're just going to take this. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to click and drag into my document. Now there are a couple of ways of getting rid of this white background. For simplicity's sake, I might just turn it to multiply for now since we're working in a white background anyways. I'm just going to scale that down to match that image. So maybe a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. Now for those of you wondering why I put it on a multiply filter, what multiply does is it essentially takes out all the white parts of the image um, and completely removes them. So when it's on a white background, of course it just takes out the white parts of the image and it just appears white, which is a little cool bit of information. Lots of cool stuff you can do with blending modes. I might do a video on those in the future and show you all of the cool things you can do with blending modes. So now it's looking like we're pretty much done. Two more things that we need to add though. It looks like they have a texture in the background of their image. That's easy enough. So I found this texture on a website called Unsplash. If you don't know what Unsplash is, essentially you can go on, search any image or texture, and it's completely free to use. And they have a whole library of images and textures you can use 100% for free. So I'm just gonna download this drag it into my document just like that easy enough I might scale it up a little bit to fit and then I'm gonna drag this in our background actually I might leave it kind of up top for now and I'm gonna set the blending mode to multiply so you can see it gets rid of all of the gray parts in the image and keeps all of the or it gets rid of all the white and light gray parts of the image and keeps all the dark parts. So then we're able to go through and adjust the fill and keep just subtle parts of our texture without compromising the entire image. That's looking pretty good. Now we're basically there. We have one more small thing we're going to do. So I'm going to select all of my layers, hit Command G to group them. And then I'm going to duplicate that group. I'm going to hide the bottom one. The reason we're doing this is because we're about to merge one of those groups and we want to maintain the ability to edit all of those layers in one uh, central place. So right now I'm just going to right click on that first group and hit merge group. And that makes everything one flat single layer. It makes it easier to apply um, effects to the top of it. Now I'm going to go back to filter and then hit camera raw filter just like we had done before. Now Ohio State uses two kind of subtle effects in their designs. They use grain and they use a little bit of, I pronounced this wrong last time so I'm gonna, vignetting I hope is the right way to say that. Who knows. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of grain to my image to match that effect. So we can go down to effects in the camera raw filter tool and then just drag up grain until it looks kind of what we're looking for. Perfect. And then vignetting, so if you drag up, it makes your corners white, and if you drag down, it makes them darker. So we want a little subtle dark on the outside parts of our image. And we're gonna hit maybe a little bit less. We're gonna hit OK. And you can see, so it added the grain and the dark parts to our image. And that's it guys, that's how you create this entire design completely from scratch in Adobe Photoshop. So make sure you like this video if you got something out of it or learned something or wanna share it with a friend, just make sure you like the video so other people can see this content. Um, the other thing is make sure you leave a comment down in the comments about what you wanna see next or what kind of content you're looking for from a channel like this. We have lots of exciting ideas for things we're putting out very soon. So stay tuned and have a great day.